So first of all, of all thanks to the, to the Six Rivers uh, project uh, and, uh, and Peter for inviting me and letting me have the opportunity to, uh, to uh, present the story about how uh, the uh, salmon in stocks in Denmark uh, came from dangerous towards sustainable, a slight change in the title. We are, we are not yet there, we are not sustained, we have, don't have do not have a completely sustainable uh, populations yet, but we are, we are on the way towards that. Um, this is a typically uh, lowland river in Denmark. We don't have bedrock. And this is actually a river skern. Uh, that's where I started my career as a freshwater fish biologist. Uh, or next year, 30 years ago, I started tagging smolts with radio tags and counting uh, smolts in that river. So, many years ago, um, and uh, I have had the pleasure and uh, I will always, almost say honor to be a part of this, uh, of this story. Of course, many colleagues, especially from uh, the freshwater fisheries and ecology group, has been involved in that. So it's not, of course, not my achievement, achievement uh, alone. So a lot of people have been in involved in this. <clears throat> so the status uh, in the 80s was that we had, we knew we had one uh, population left with uh, indigenous salmon, River Skjern, as I showed you before. <clears throat> um, the sporadic catches in the remainder of the rivers were believed to, uh, to be strayers. Originally we had uh, eight salmon rivers, uh, sorry, eight western Jutland salmon rivers and one eastern Jutland salmon river in Denmark. <clears throat> so, uh, what went wrong uh, is what I'm going to uh, show you now. Um, in the period from 1940 to 1970, uh, large land claim projects were carried out, and I think the, I can say that the Danish uh, Rivers are the most mistreated in northern Europe, anyway. Maybe Holland is just about at the same level, but we have two-thirds of the country's agricultural land, and uh, of course, spawning nurse and nursery areas were uh, was destroyed, and uh, <clears throat> migration impaired by installations like that one, and the rivers were, were canalized. Uh, Sorry about the, the poor resolution of that picture. I guess you get, you, but you get the picture. Uh, you see canalization and you see uh, mobilization of sediment at the banks. It all went out to, to the rivers and uh, destroyed the, the, uh, the spawning grounds. We also had a lot of small barriers, mills and fish farms, and that actually started uh, about a thousand years ago with, with the Vikings uh, making uh, water mills. Later, uh, they developed into, uh, into fish farms. A lot of these water mill barriers were used for fish farming. Uh, when you have a fish uh, like an earth pond, like earth pond uh, facility like this one, you always have a barrier in the, in, the, in the downstream end to stem the water so you can get the water in, into, the, into the ponds. And in 1970, we had about 800 of these uh, uh, facilities in, in uh, Danish rivers. Uh, today, I think 150 is a high number. I would guess it's more like 125 uh, are left today. So, and we also had hydropower development from 1920 to 1970. Uh, the one to the right is uh, demolished, it has gone now. The one to the left is still there in the River Guino. <clears throat> and this caused uh, uh, river blockage and prevented migration to the spawning grounds. Uh, and the, the salmon population in River Guino is, was, was the only eastern uh, salmon river we had, uh, is now completely extinct. So, uh, we have put a lot of effort into documentation. I'm not going to talk much about that, but this uh, table here documents how the, what the mean, mean small loss is at the different weir types water mills, fish farms, and hydropower facilities, so it's 30, 42, and 82. So, uh, what, well, we, we don't know exactly what is going on in, 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 the, in the ponds, but predation and disorientation is probably one of them. But if you 
look at a river, for example, where you have three fish farms, which was, which was not at, uh, at all uncommon in, in, in previous times, statistically, you will have a small loss of 80%, and that, that won't be, you won't be able to carry up a, uh, <coughs> a salmon population, or for that sake, a sea trout population in a river like that. Um, here's a proxy of the, how it went with the salmon population in the river Skjern. This is uh, landings in uh, Ringkøbing Fjord. Of course, uh, there's also a lot of uh, dark numbers here, so they're not included, but you get the picture. In the beginning of the 80s, uh, <coughs> virtually no salmon were caught in, uh, in, uh, in the history of, uh, of uh, River Skjern. So, uh, in the late 90s, a colleague and I uh, reviewed uh, the, the, the salmon uh, population uh, rehabilitation effort we have, we have done, and we also combined with service in this river. And uh, naive and young as we were, we, after that we should actually suggested that there might be a, a, a remainder left in some of those rivers. And uh, <clears throat> I went to the population geneticist, and they looked, looked weird at me and said, well, uh, well, we can, we can try that, we can find out. So uh, they have done that with the river scan, and actually in 93 demonstrated that, the, that the, the, the population in the river scan, it was only like maybe 100 spawners in average, uh, were still uh, indigenous fish. So we, uh, we collected fish from uh, the remainder uh, rivers, and uh, what we got a new status in 2001, oh, sorry, three, and uh, suddenly we had four indigenous uh, populations left. <clears throat> they were very small, small maybe uh, in average 100 spawners per year. So uh, now we throw our, all the effort we had, we possibly could, into uh, rescuing these, uh, these four uh, populations. And uh, the management tools, tools were restoration and removal of uh, barriers, fishery regulations, and then stocking. Um, I'll start with the latter one. Not that we are fond of stocking, but the, the level was so low, so they were in danger of, of becoming extinct, so we had to do that. Um, and we optimized this stocking program, and on the way we found out that, that it, doesn't re it, it does matter what you are stocking. Uh, as you see in that uh, figure to the left, uh, before 2000 and and uh, four, we tried to stock uh, non-native uh, fish from uh, Ireland, Scotland, and Sweden. And uh, the black uh, line is the angler's catch, and you don't uh, hardly see any signal in, in the angler's catch of these stockings. So we found out in 2003 we had an indigenous uh, salmon left, and we started a up a breeding program on, on the fish. We actually screened, DNA screened the fish, so we were, we were sure that they were indigenous, and we started stocking in 2004. And a few years later, we saw, uh, saw a, a, an effect in, in anglers' catch uh, on that. So that was, a, that was a quite a positive uh, story. Today, we are only stocking half yearlings, and, uh, and, and it's actually declining the number we are stocking every year. Um, so uh, a lot of barriers have been removed in Danish uh, rivers. We don't have done much research on salmon, actually, because, as I said, there was not much to do research on. But we have used uh, sea trout as a model species, and uh, we have done quite a lot of, of studies on that. So here is an example where we've removed the barrier, and uh, in that river, River uh, Villestrup, uh, sorry, I'm coming to that, in this river, River Villestrup, we did a full uh, river restoration, removing uh, seven uh, weirs, uh, most of them hatchery uh, for, for hatchery facilities. So what actually happened here? So you see, we've re removed the first weir, that was the, the lower one, the first downstream one, in 2005, and we saw an increase in, in uh, spawning run of sea trout. And by 2013, all uh, seven weirs had been removed. And now we have a spawning run of about three to 4,000 uh, sea trout every, every year. And this is a small river. This is like five cubic meters per second or something like that. 
So that is quite nice. The, 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 that is a massive number of spawners coming into that river. It's, it is incredible when you go out and, and do uh, inve investigations on that and see how many fish there actually are. So um, restored habitat in the ponded zone, it tends to be a little bit overlooked, low, overlooked the consequences of that because barriers not only impair migration upstream, it also impairs uh, migration downstream. And it also creates a ponded zone with uh, low gradient, uh, lo <coughs> with low flow and sedimentation, and loss of habitat. So uh, here's an example where we investigated uh, before and after removal of a uh, of a barrier, and you see, we have we have did done before our surveys until uh, 2008, and then then the barrier was moved. And immediately after, we saw an increase in the uh, in, uh, young of the year uh, uh, trout, brown trout. And actually also uh, downstream, we saw an increase in, uh, in numbers. And that was a derivative uh, effect, I guess, from, uh, from fish produced in, in the upstream area, migrating or drifting down and occupying the downstream uh, <coughs> habitat. So we also have a lot of other data to present. Here's, a, here's data from habitat restoration, before and after data, 71 pr small projects, often consisting of stocking gravel and meandering uh, the, uh, the small rivers. And uh, we also saw an effect of that, so we could document that we had two to three times an increase in the young of the year trout production in, in these uh, areas before and after. <coughs> And uh, now to something bigger, the Skiano, River Skiano Nature Projects was implemented in 2002. And at that time anyway, it was the largest restoration project in, uh, in Europe. So you see on the picture, you see the, the uh, channelized uh, river and, uh, and the re-meandering new riverbed is, uh, is uh, being constructed uh, to, to, the, to the right of that. And it was, uh, as I said, it was, uh, <coughs> it was uh, opened in 2002. We had done a lot of dam removal. I think something is, is missing here, but never mind. That's how it looked for before. That's, that's how it looks now. <coughs> Same here. That's how it looked before. That's how it looks now. A lot of fishery regulations in the estuaries and in the Wharton Sea where the salmon will uh, migrate uh, when you'll, they leave the, the rivers. Uh, ban of fishing uh, gear, uh, quarters in the rivers, um, quarters in one sea uh, winter and quarters in multi sea winter. Maximum 10% of the spawning run, run uh, are ab uh, allowed to be landed. And then they're allowed to do a catch and release uh, fishery after that. And we have reduced the fishing period from 16th of April to 16th of October. So it's actually started uh, three days ago. So we have also regulated predators. We have demonstrated that cormorants actually are predating between 40 and 50% and of the salmon entering the, uh, the estuary uh, of uh, River Skjern. So that is quite massive, a massive uh, predation going on in the estuaries. Uh, egg culling has been going on, whether that works or not, that, I think that's for, uh, up to debate. But, uh, but anyway, it has been done, but it has not affected the total number of comrades in way. So it's still, it's still a problem. We actually we investigated it in 2021 and we found a 42% mortality in history. So, it doesn't really work. So, this is a picture of how the salmon population developed. I've got, I show you uh, five rivers here uh, where we have good uh, catch statistics, and I have brought in 96 and 97 for, uh, for comparison. So, it, that is quite nice, uh, as you see. So, uh, this is a Picture showing, showing what is going on. I have told that. In 2022, we actually have the largest seven salmon run to a river scan that we have uh, measured to date. It was more than 7,000 uh, fish uh, migrating into a uh, river scan. So 
it has, uh, it has brought us here, uh, happy anglers, and we have actually stopped, stopped stocking in two rivers, River Storo and River Ribio, because they're self-sustaining now, so no reason for continuing stocking. Um, so where to go from here? As you see, we have had this inc uh, incline in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in catches and also uh, in, uh, <coughs> in, in uh, spawning run, but it's sort of stagnated now. So what to do now? So uh, we will continue our adaptive management approach. This is what I've been talking about. We have published an, a paper of that, so no more words on that. Um, can we do more efficient predation, uh, regulation of predation? or predators? Well, that is to a high degree a political uh, question, but they are definitely a problem in, in, in some uh, rivers. They uh, will forage, the comrades will forage in the rivers and of course eat a lot of, uh, of, uh, of juvenile fish. So we have also, uh, yeah, and that will uh, that would ultimately, if we can do that and we can increase the, the smart run from the rivers, we will of course have a a, uh, a, uh, not, uh, we will have a higher return rate. Um, we can also improve an in expanding habitat. Um, we still do that because we're moving barriers, so we are still expanding habitats, but we can also focus on improving uh, habitat. This is a measure of the salmon habitat quality, it's an index uh, based on physical uh, parameters. So what we want is a blue color, so there's still a large potential in, in three of the rivers uh, to improve habitat here. Um, continued focus on removing barriers. And uh, just to jump to conclusions, uh, this adaptive management approach has actually worked in Denmark. Of course, we, of course we have learned on the way and, we did, and in the beginning, we didn't know it was an adaptive management uh, approach, but we, we found out later that it was. So, uh, and um, <clears throat> we used all the tools we had in the toolbox simultaneously. That is not, in a scientific way, it's, it's, it's not preferable because we cannot distinguish the, the, the effects. But uh, from a management perspective, it was the only r right thing to do because the, the uh, the populations were so close to extin extinction. And I think in, in the future, st stronger focus on tourism and uh, socioeconomics may be a positive contributor to this uh, positive de development. And uh, we still prioritize uh, our, our management tools, ri river restoration and barrier removal first, then fishery regulations and then stocking. So that was just about it. I, I'm. I don't know whether I should be proud of this one or not. That fish to the right, it's a female salmon caught yesterday. That is the largest fish caught since the one to the left, which was caught in 1954 in River Skjern. 130 centimeters and 21 kilograms, so. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Very much, thanks. Great, thanks very much.